All right, so what? So, so you're not going to talk about your, your heart attack this week? It wasn't a heart attack. Okay, I don't care what it was. It Earl, was who works here, comes in and said, Bruce, everybody looked at you and thought you'd be the one with the heart attack, what? not Bob. It I wasn't was, a heart attack. I mean, I wasn't offended because I don't hold grudges. Well, unlike you don't hold grudges. What about Baker Mayfield? I don't hold grudges against Baker Mayfield. I just hate him. Oh, and I, I hate him because I'm not even going to go there. But he was very inappropriate. Right. Oh, we're on. Okay. From the iconic Corky and Lenny's restaurant and delicatessen, we are the fabulous Boomer Boys. Hi, Bob. Hi, like Bob Snyder. This is my friend from the fourth grade. You're still my friend, aren't you? Uh, it's close. Okay, it's close. Bruce Bogart, and uh, we are here to entertain you, hopefully. And uh, for those of you that have been watching the program, what are you looking at me for? Well, I've been here every week. You want, right? Okay. If you've been watching us, you know we have been picking up quite a few people on our uh, hits. So we want, we hope you'll continue doing that. And we feel that we are soon to be the number one webcast for baby boomers. So we hope that that'll continue and keep uh, picking us up on the. Uh, <laughs> There. But anyway, we were, we were just talking before we went on the air about grudges. And I was saying to Bruce how I thought it was great how ba Baker Mayfield played for the Cleveland Browns mm -hmm. and excited about it. Looks like we finally have a quarterback. And you told me you hate him? I don't hate him. That's not right. I don't oh, hate him. Oh, right. I, and in fact, I, I excuse him for his indiscretion in, in, um, at the Ohio Stadium. When he was a senior, at wherever Oklahoma. he was, when and he, he tried to put stick the flag the, in the middle of the field. Yeah, but he couldn't stick it in, so I thought that was kind of funny. Well, that's right. an issue you and him have, and I don't want to go there. I, just, I mean, let's move beyond oh, that. Oh no, we're grown-ups now. This is what I have. This is why my kids don't want to watch the show. <laughs> my kids don't want to watch. My kids don't even know there's a show because they're worried about what we'll say. We'll embarrass ourselves. Right. And actually, don't worry. We've been embarrassing ourselves for a half a century. That's true. We can handle it. We can handle it. We can handle it. <laughs> and it's funny you mentioned about half a century because we are very honored tonight. Besides having uh, my friend since fourth grade. Mine. Bruce, it's our, our. It's a team game, Bob. Okay. Bruce and I have been friends since fourth grade. We have with us tonight, all the way from Israel, a friend of mine from the third grade. Uh, a friend of ours. Oh, no, you didn't know him in the third grade. Oh, Julius Stockfish. <laughs> and uh, talk about grudges. Talk about grudges. He brought his wife, who was originally from Pittsburgh. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. And she's here, and that's Sally Stockfish. And uh, actually, she's really more of the honored guest because Sally played in the um, Israel Philharmonic and was a, uh, played the French horn. And I had a lot of jokes I could make about Julius marrying somebody to play the French horn, but Julius, I won't do that. <laughs> I will, I would Bruce just. Was right. I did marry up. You did oh, marry yeah. up. Married yes, up. absolutely. So we're so glad you came here. And it's the beauty of the internet, really, because uh, Julius uh, was visiting, not because he wanted to be on the show. Let's be honest, Bruce. I know you think that's why he came, but that isn't why. But he has relatives here, and he came to visit people uh, back in the, uh, home country, what do you call it, the old country, I guess, America, and uh, we were so honored to find out that he's been watching us on, uh, on YouTube in Israel, so it's so amazing, and now I know why my kids are so worried about what I say, because once you're up on YouTube, anybody, anywhere could see this. That's right. So, Bruce. Do you remember what his nickname was in high school? Absolutely. Can we say it or no? Sure, we could say it. Smoothie. Hey, smoothie. This guy. <laughs> He was, he was, he made you look like a nerd, and you, of course, made me look like a nerd. Well, so, yeah, it's, right. So, and now he talks to me more than he talks to you, so God has a way. Well, I That's guess. Way. <laughs> but anyway, uh, more importantly, anyway. even more important than someone from Israel. On with the show. On with the show. On with the, all right. So we have with us tonight a, uh, you know, we've been trying to do things a little differently. Those of you that are following us, we've had, uh, uh, we only got a half hour. Do you remember who we've had? Robin. Yeah, okay. we had Robin, Robin Svoboda. Svoboda. We had James we had Jones. Jan we Jones. had Bob DiBiazio. We had the guy from the Mafia. That's right. He wrote the book. Yeah. Rick Perello wrote yeah. the book about uh, the Danny Green murder. So, and we've also last week got into a little bit about uh, health topics. So we thought we'd go another week of talking about that as well. And tonight we have with us Lori Christian. And Bruce, I think you know that she is uh, with. She's with Chagrin Chiropractic. And I even did some research. Do you know the difference between a chiropractor, this is not a joke, and an osteopath? Yes. 
No, no, is it well, osteopath? Well, what was the guy who killed his wife? Sam Shepard was yeah, an osteopath. Yeah, yeah. Were those are osteopaths really yeah. doctors? He was an osteopath. Yeah, yeah, I think they are. Hey, okay. hey, you're, you're not a guest. You, you're, you sit over there. <laughs> there <laughs> there's a flight to New York right. to get you home soon enough. Okay, well, finish your research. Anyway, so I'm not quite sure I understand, and I didn't want to belabor the point because some of us can't spell osteopath. But um, I think we need to get her on and let her explain what she does because there's a lot of things we presume we know that we don't know. And she's going to help some of you that have had problems and have thought about going to a chiropractor. So here's Lori Christian. All right. Hi, Hi Lori. Hi, Bob. I noticed you gave mm -hmm. Bruce a hug, but that's okay. So, uh, <laughs> We've been friends for how long? Uh, many years. Many years. Almost right. two decades. Sorry, I, I give you a lovely handshake. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> chiropractors. They got you. Know. Anyway, no. Tell you know that. Uh, tell us the difference between the doctors since Bruce brought that up right off the bat, because then I'll. It's a long and convoluted story. Um, no, don't make it long. I know. So I, I really, I'm a chiropractic physician in the state of Ohio. It's, and all states, there's chiropractic physicians, and that's I'm considered a doctor. I have a primary health care portal. You don't have to go to your chiropractor or your primary doctor to go to a chiropractor. You can go directly to me. You don't have to have a referral or anything. And I have a, a duty to diagnose, and I can sign death certificates and do other things, too, that I don't do, but I have a legal right to do these things. But osteopaths are wonderful, wonderful doctors. I love osteopaths. They're kind of oh, a hybrid okay. between... Um, medical and chiropractic. Originally in 1895 chiropractors and osteopaths were both um, originated or founded, um, although adjusting the spine has been around since the days of Hippocrates, 400 AD I believe, um, who said care of the human frame was of utmost importance in overall health. Um, but osteopaths and chiropractors in 1895 both decided to adjust the spine but we had different philosophies. Ours was to reduce nerve interference, ours was to reduce muscle spasm. So. As time has gone on, they are, they do what all medical doctors do. They're phenomenal. And they can do brain surgery, they can do immunology, they can do, you know, oh, oh, oh. everything. Right. Right. We don't so, want to talk about that. Let's talk about chiropractic. Before we, one quick, oh, an you, you have a question? Oh, it's right. An osteopath can do brain surgery? If they're a specialist, they can do it, they're like a medical doctor. But they have training and adjustments. Okay. That's the difference. Right. Bob, anyway. But Bob, very, Bob, very few do, about less than 10%. Okay, Bob wants to talk to you about chiropractic. Is that, did I pronounce that right? Chiropractic. Chiropractic. Chiropractic care. It's a weird word, I know. We're an odd profession. Okay, here's my weird partner. Go ahead, Bob. Well, it's funny, because I talked to a, a doctor today, and I said I, who we were going to have on the show. And uh, I asked him, what are your thoughts on that? Because over the years, I think I'm right in saying there may be some people that are in the medical profession that maybe don't give you what you deserve. Thank you. And so what he, uh, what he said to me is that uh, he feels that one of the great things about chiropractors is if there's somebody, for example, and most people think you talk about the spine and the back area, I think a lot of people go there, go to people like you for that purpose, if they have pains in that area. And he says the beauty of what people like you do, tell me if I'm wrong, is that if, if you're thinking of getting surgery, it's probably best to go to a chiropractor first and see if maybe they can help you with their form of healing, and then you can avoid the surgery. Conservative care is a great place to start, and that's what we are all about. Plus, we look at things holistically, look at the whole body, not just, you know, oh, you have pain in your leg? Well, that's sciatic pain. Well, it's coming from your back. But let's take a look at your hips. Let's take a look at the rest of your spine too. Maybe you have something else going on, a higher or lower. Let's take a look at your knee or ankle. I, I'm a, actually, um, I'm a CCSP, which is a certified chiropractic sports physician, which doesn't mean anything to anybody, unless you're in um, the chiropractic profession, but I went to college for additional accreditation. I have different initials after my name um, that I do a lot of sports injury stuff. And I also now am an affiliate of Chiropractic Hand and Foot of America, which is another specialty, and I treat a lot of foot more feet than hands. I thought it would be more hands in carpal tunnel, but it's more plantar fasciitis feet. and foot problems. And, and the other reason you're here, and we want to make that clear, is because we are a show aimed at baby boomers, and I would think the majority of your patients are not millennials who are afraid to go to doctors, but You'd baby be boomers. Yeah. I, I have a, I treat every, I mean, I, but I know you treat 10, anybody. But 10 yeah. years old, and I treat a lot of baby boomers because they're doing this all day long. 
Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. And I had a, a patient, my last patient tonight, who had a, a huge problem in his neck, he's 29. Huge. A lot of tingling, uh, just huge problem. And it was because of the position of his neck. But I do treat Medicare age people too. A lot of them. Well, we're not, uh, well, forget Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, people we're a little young, over 50. over fifty. Yeah, let's go over, let's fifty. Go over fifty. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's, I treat a lot of those. Too. I treat I'm a lot very of blessed. I treat a lot of a lot of things. I'm not just, mm -hmm. you know, a specialist in in just treating one thing, workers comp or something. No, that's not what I do. Okay. Well, how old people? They call up. They say, "Hey, listen, I got a problem with my elbow, or my heart, whatever it is. You know, <laughs> my <double> elbow." <laughs> okay. And um, do you have? You don't get referrals. The people a lot of people right off the street, right? Do they, do they see you first? Do, the, someone, do they have to work their way up to you in your office? No. I know you've got 107 people working there. I've been there. So, I mean, how does it work? I mean, I come in, I got a bad back. You don't always say, you don't just say, which I would have thought 20 years ago, lay down on the, <laughs> you, know, and, 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 you know, so how does it work? I mean, it's not like going to JCC for a rub. So no, what's going not. on here? So what happens is, because of I always thought he went to uh, never mind for a so, while. So I have you fill out. Not that they've ever done it, Bob. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. I have you fill out a bunch of stuff online. I have electronic health records. Yes, you have to go on a computer. If you don't have one, you come to my office and you fill it out there. Then I look at what you filled out. I take you into my office for a consultation. I say, geez, Bruce. So when did the elbow pain start? And and what is it? Is it when you're, you know throwing a, a baseball or is it when you're helping your wife fold laundry? I'm sure there's a lot oh, of Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Carrie. Yeah, um, right. well, wait a second. Wait. Your elbow pain. So <laughs> then we talk some more and I say, okay, you sound like you're a, a good candidate for chiropractic care. Um, there are people once in a while that I say, you're really not. I've sent people immediately out to somebody else. Like um, for what, what would cause you to send someone out of the house? Um, I had a patient that came in and she had been a patient previously and she came she goes, this is the worst sciatic pain I've ever had and she was hobbling and crying and that's not unusual. I treat people like that um, on occasion. But I knew this patient and I knew that this was a different pain and I said, come on, we gotta do an exam. What rocked her, helped her walk back to the exam room I did an exam and I said, um, you're gonna go immediately to the emergency room. I think you have a, a blood clot in your leg. And um, she did. And um, as a matter of fact, it was apparently a, about a, a 10 inch one in her femoral artery, which would have killed her. So, oh. all right. So, yeah. It's that's like what happened to me. Yeah. Well, I had a uh, blockage. So you, instead of going to a Hoosier, you could have gone to Lori. And she no, no, said, I'm here. And she would have said, go to the emergency room. Right. Right. As a matter of fact, I said to this woman, if you don't call, you know, 911, um, I will. Or, right. you know, we got to get you there right now. And don't touch your leg. Oh, I've been rubbing it. Don't touch your leg. No, no, no. Right. Wrong answer. So, okay. Go, did you want to say something? Go yeah. Right is that okay? Oh, I mean, you know, once in a while I like to talk, Bruce. Go right but I, I, I want to ask you, and maybe somebody in the audience, we thought we'd do a little audience participation. If there's somebody in the audience, Kathleen, <laughs> you mentioned to me that you, you've been to a chiropractor. So maybe, uh, can we have maybe like a little demonstration here in front of us <laughs> as to like wh what, you might, what you might ask or what a person might ask or how you okay. would first, is that okay with everybody? The yeah, let's do like it, come on. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, do please. some practical application here. Bruce, why don't you let her out your way? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't trip over our wires, okay. Okay, I think right over, the, right, right in there, Kathleen will be good. Yeah. So yeah. Down. Grab a chair. Okay. Yeah, I know the, I know the crowd. Right. So, what is Kathleen actually is a patient of mine, and she has already had an informed consent, filled out a bunch of paperwork, has had an exam, had X-rays, the whole shebang treatment. So, anyway, so basically what I do is, um, as far as the treatment goes, I usually do it lying down. I've got a bunch of fancy stuff in my office. I do some physical therapy first, kind of get her muscles relaxed. Well, let me uh, ask you this question before. So, Kathleen, why would you? Why did you go to a chiropractor? What was? What was I actually about? had uh, pain in my hip, and okay. I a common thing for people our age. Very much so, and uh, so she did a bunch of X-rays, and she told me my one leg is shorter than my other. Oh, okay. And uh -huh. you've got did, something like that, don't you? With something yeah. short. Well, so, hmm. they're not even. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, let now let her go ahead. You, okay. So anyway, Smoothie you do a full exam and stuff, that. and um, I have people get into a gown, and I do reflexes, range of motion, orthopedic, um, neurologic, chiropractic tests, and then I come up with the diagnosis, and I often will take an x-ray if she doesn't have x-rays or other diagnostic testing since she hurt herself. But um, 
Yeah, and people often come in, oh, it's my hip, it's my hip. I said, well, can you show me? Well, you're the doctor, don't you know where my hip is? It's right here. <laughs> oh, well, your, your hip is actually here. And I've got a skeleton and show them and everything. But she did. 90% of the people think that their hip is here. That's really your sacroiliac joint. That's a different problem. Which is why I diagnose people. Diagnosis is very important. And when she poked my hip, it hurt. So. And I cried. So anyway, we got that taken care of. And then she gave me, gives me adjustments to help my back because I sit, and then she told me how to, I sit improperly at work, so. Posture is my passion. It is something. <coughs> so if you ever tag. watch Lori, she has passion. Perfect, passion. perfect posture. No, no, thank you for giving me more credit than I deserve. But anyway, so I did all this stuff to her. And so I what usually, are you doing with her next? Right now I'm palpating. Um, and she's got it right there. Is that a little sore? Yes. So anyway, she, <laughs> I usually adjust people laying down. I've got this fancy table that goes up and down, and like I said, a bunch of other stuff, but. I'm not getting on that table. Kathleen yeah. yeah. so, yeah. would be laying down, not her. Yeah, oh, right, so I'm right, right, right. She's laying down, <laughs> and, and I face down, and then I do some stuff and face up, but I can also adjust her seated. She is really, really tight. Well, she's probably nervous being with the family. No, it, this is. Oh. <laughs> I think this was beyond. <laughs> She's got nerves of steel. You think she should make an appointment to see you? Uh, she definitely should. Okay. But What's your phone number? <laughs> well, no, I have the audience might want to know. 2165959999. 2165959999? Mm -hmm. You know where it is? It's right around the corner on that block where Moxie is. On that strip, right there. Um, right facing next Richmond. Moxie. Right there. Right. Facing Richmond. Right. Okay, Here great. Here office meetings through my treatment room. They probably hear me giving advice on posture too. Mm -hmm. So with an adjustment, I mean, she said, I'm, you want to know what an adjustment is like? There's a, there's a YouTuber who has 11 million views <coughs> of adjusting people. So you want to see what an adjustment looks like. In this case, this is not always what I do, but I will do this. Have, so I have her just relax. Just sl sl sc scoot down so your butt's more slouchy. Oh, just like that? Yeah, just, just like that. that. Oh. And it did a, not hurt a, at all. It doesn't hurt at all. Right? No. That was a very generalized move. Usually I'm a little bit more specific, but... Right. And does that, relief come immediately? Immediately. I mean, I can feel I the can, muscles are relaxed. Really? So. Mm -hmm. she would, it, hurt, it hurt before when she was pressing on it. She no was longer really hurt. tight. Yeah. Now, I and I, I'm not paying her to say... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she's not. Trust me, she's not. Solicited. No, no. She, she really didn't know she was going to be on because I asked her when she came in if she... She's been, a, uh, no, she's be been at our program before. I know, she's been a mess over here too. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll get some of this stuff. This is harder to adjust um, seated, but the neck is easier to adjust seated. And some people adjust better seated, about 10% get in a seated adjustment, but most of them get an adjustment while they're laying down on my table. Now, I know the Browns, for example, mm -hmm. have a chiropractor mm -hmm. that is a lot of the sports teams do and actually is on the field with them and that kind of thing so what kind of sports injuries unlike bruce i still play sports and i'm wondering what kind of, look what it got you what kind of what kind of what kind of, what kind of injuries thank you very much thank you Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so what kind of uh, sports injuries do i treat yeah Everything from rotator cuff to tennis elbow to plantar, like I said, plantar fasciitis is huge right now. Vertebral what's what's what is that real fast? Plantar fasciitis, it's when the bottom of your foot hurts when you wake up in the morning and you step on it, you're like, oh, what is this? Oh, I get that. I do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because you're, you're, you know, you're carrying a lot of weight around. You know. that's, I have people that weigh, you know. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm it's kidding. It's actually, I actually, I've got to say this now. Bruce has lost over 30 pounds recently, so I don't know. I bet it can help get me off the hook. It parallels my time with you, Bob. Okay. <laughs> I have this thing. It's at, um, if, my, if this was my foot, it's like right here. It's right at the bottom of the base of the toes. And I don't want to step on it in the morning. It's, and I feel like, well, God, I'm getting old. And that's just the cost of living, you know? No. You're so incorrect, what, sir. Okay. okay. So what's up? You think you can do something with it? I come, uh, I come in and you twist my leg? I, I adjust your feet, I adjust your ankles, I absolutely do. I did it today probably uh, six or seven times. People's feet. So the guy, one guy came in today, this is his fourth treatment, he said, I forgot what it's like to walk without pain. Honest to goodness, he was just in this afternoon too. Well, that's interesting. I, I don't think I have pain, I have, like, I would say, discomfort. You know, so I walk around it, so to speak. Well, have so you been married? You How many times have you been married? I think they have a big difference between pain <laughs> 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 and discomfort. We're not going to 
to go there, Bruce. <laughs> so by the way, <laughs> I do. By the way, I do want you to, when you see my wife, and I know you'll see her somewhere along the way, <coughs> tell her there is a problem if you fold laundry that you could. Connect. Yeah, I don't have a problem if you tell her. <laughs> I love your wife. I will not lie to her. <laughs> well, you know, I've got to tell you, we were a little skeptical about having an actual medical person with us. But you've been great because I really think people that are watching this that are baby boomers are thinking about this kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, uh, it's a great as... option for conservatives. So where do you start? You know what? I always tell people, I refer out for a surgery for people. I refer out for a pain management for people. I cannot fix everything. I am not one of these people that thinks I can do cure global warming and, you know, everything else. But I know what I, I'm capable of doing. I've been a chiropractor for 33 years. A license in the she state looks of thirty. Ohio. She looks thirty-three. I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, I know, I know it makes a difference. And if I can't help you, you're out a little bit of time. The worst thing that can happen is you get better range of motion, and you know, it costs you a little money. So, and let me tell you, it's a lot less than pretty much any other healthcare profession going to. I mean, it's a little money compared to everybody else. It really is. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you give your phone number again. Please, I'm going to ask you to, please. 595-9999, Sugar and Chiropractic and Wellness. Great. Thank you for coming out. Will you sit here with us for a few more minutes while we do a little more business here? And we've got a, uh, Bruce, good job. Bruce brought the guest tonight, i got to tell you. I want to thank you for letting me have some input in the programming, Bob. <laughs> My pleasure. That's mar market progress. Okay. Well, anyway, guess what's coming up, everybody? On October 24th, it's a Wednesday, we get a shot of this. It's the Boomer Bash. And uh, I don't, don't know how to say this, but some of the stars of the program are Bruce Bogart and Bob Snyder, the fabulous Boomer Boys. We're going to be appearing in Lander Haven for the, East, uh, the Boomer Bash East. And it's uh, sponsored by the Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond magazine. And here's, here's a good thing that you'll like, I think, being a physician. Uh, the money for this is going to be raised for uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah. So it's not just a strictly commercial thing that we're doing. So uh, we're going to be, we are going to be there. And so will Mike Oshevsky, who's been one of our guests on our program, will be there. And uh, all kinds of other entertainment. Besides the fabulous Boomer Boys, thank God. But also, uh, there will be uh, booze for food and uh, I think some other health checks as well. So I, I think it goes along with the program here tonight. And next week, in fact, we are going to have the publisher of the uh, Northeast Ohio Boomer and Beyond. He'll be with us along with his editor, and that's Brad Mitchell and uh, Marie Ellum. I hope I pronounced that right, or so she still shows up. But they will be here next week, and we're going to talk some more about the bash, but they'll also uh, be talking about their magazine, which you can get. Are you ready for this, Bruce? You're going to like ready. this. It's free. And you can go to places like uh, Giant Eagle. Yeah. I know that's where I get mine. And uh, that's. Uh, and also, you can, if you see Bob at any traffic light, he's always got it on his passenger seat. <laughs> if you see him, say, Are you Bob Snyder? And he'll hold up the magazine. <laughs> By the way, just, I, I mean, I don't know if our people out here know. Do you know there's an exact range of age for baby boomers? Do you know what, what born here to what, what it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but go ahead. It's after World War II. To the, to, yeah, and, I th and it technically ends with the Kennedy assassination, but they round it off. To what year? To 65? Well, well but he, he, yeah. Well, I, 65, I would read 64, but you could be right. Kathleen knows more than me. 64. Yeah. Well, what does Kathleen know her? You know her own neck. 1964. Can I ask the doctor? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have a question for the doctor. Actually, Go ahead. I, I'm a boomer then, too. You are? Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I knew more boomers that look like you. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a chiropractor many times, and I, and I swear by you guys. Thank you. I, where I couldn't even walk my back three hours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and he looks like he's in good shape, doesn't he? No. You, sure, not, okay. from, it's not from where I am. Well, well, all right. My question is, can you do some kind of adjustment to lower blood pressure? Um, I would never do that. I would never set out to, to do an adjustment to lower blood pressure. There have been studies done that show that it does lower blood pressure, I would, that's never my intent. My intent is always to correct subluxations in the spine, if it's a bone out of alignment, that it's not functioning correctly. I don't treat blood pressure problems. I don't treat ear infections. I don't treat 
anything like that. I treat subluxations of the spine. So you don't do things like prostate? Um, I do not. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a baby boomer problem. Yes, and I will refer you to the, to the great urologist. Not my problem. Not my okay. area specialty. Well, that's good. And I have a lot of respect for a doctor that says something isn't their specialty, and they pass you on to somebody that, that does it. Because there, there's... There are doctors that don't do that, as we know. Good comeback. Very okay. Nice. okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. It's a good question. Okay. Good question from the audience. What do you say? Huh? <laughs> Alan, you want to bring up our, uh, our gift for tonight? We have, as uh, usual, this is Alan, our security guard. Don't trip, <laughs> Alan. Okay. And we're going to yeah. ask Lori, mix them up. We have a $25. Like they're moving around a lot. A twenty-five dollar gift certificate we give away to Corky and Lenny's each week, Lori. So ah. uh, dig in there and pick somebody out and let Bruce read it because he likes to do that. <laughs> Thank you. It's not your. Go ahead. No, it's a, well, someone who's won in the past. Okay. So I'm going to say Susan. Nice try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, one mine. Oh, you know what? Seriously, would you read this name out loud? Julia Stockfish. Yeah. Hey! All right! Hey! All right. There you go. All right. Okay. Here you go, buddy. There you go. <laughs> we, want to get, we want to get you on the camera. Oh, watch oh, your back. <laughs> oh, no. Lori, pull this back. Mess up your knees, not your back. There you go. That's why they call him Smoothie. I'm yeah. telling you. Hey, I knew he'd figure out a way to meet her. I knew it. Absolutely. I just knew you figure out a way to he get her to. happy with this one torn over there. So. I just figured yeah. out. He, I knew he'd do that. Again, we want to thank Julie for coming. You know, we also want to thank some other people that are around the country have been watching the show. Okay. Go Joyce ahead. and Janice Schaffern in Columbus, Ohio, the twins from uh, Brush High School that we knew growing up. We received word that they, uh, through emails that they're, they're watching. I think that's kind of cool. To have people that we haven't seen in like 30 years tell us that they're watching the program. Yeah. And uh, hey, we got a mention in the newspaper this week. Did you notice oh, that? Oh, that's right. The Cleveland we Jewish News. We got a mention in the Cleveland Jewish News. They didn't mention anybody else in the picture. I don't know if you caught that or not. I did see that. They it's had a, a picture. It's of a, it's all these people, there was a reunion and we had done a, uh, we, we did a show before the reunion the night before for the elementary school. And it said all these people are here for the Justin E. Rowland Elementary School reunion. And it doesn't mention them by name, but it says, Picture, not picture, or something like that. Bob Snyder and Bruce Bogart from the Fabulous Boomer Boys. There you go. We didn't even I was know very that. Very impressed by that. All right. I'm telling you, we're going to be the number one webcast for baby boomers. I do have to say one other person, uh, Lynn Phillips. Uh, that was her maiden name. And anyway, she is. I, I like to use the women by their maiden names just because that's, that identifies people that haven't seen them for the last 40 or 50 years. And she likes our show, but she's had some very valid criticism. Our sign, for some reason, seems to glare. It does. You notice that. Have you people noticed? Yeah. Well, we love the sign. I don't know if you've noticed. It's brown and gold for Brush High, scarlet and gray for Ohio State. Okay, so that's why we have. But we're getting glare on that. And Lynn has been offering us some suggestions as to what to do. Lynn, keep the suggestions coming. Whether we use them or not, who knows? But it's nice to hear from you. I, I just want to ask you one question because I never get a chance to talk to you. Right. Every day my phone rings eight times a day. I get texts from Bob. What do we have? Let's do this. Let's do this. Why is it when you acknowledge people across the universe that watch our show, you never mention a guy? It's always a woman. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. Give okay. me an answer. William Hendricks better known as Big Will, yeah. in Austin, Texas, called me the other day because he had heard or seen on the show that I had had uh, heart surgery. And he was kind enough to say, Bruce made it sound like he had a heart attack, which I did not have. And uh, he wanted to know how I was feeling. So Will, thank you out there in Austin, Texas. And by the way, unfortunately, uh, the Indians have lost and are out of the playoffs. But Will, at one time, played in the minor leagues for the Cleveland Indians. So I think that's kind of cool that he went to Brush High School and went on to that, for those of you that didn't know. So, Will, thank you. Keep watching. And Bruce, any? No, I guess that's about it. Any okay, business, well. New business? I don't know. No, I think we're ready. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Keep watching. Keep clicking on. And we will be back next week once again with the people from Northeast Ohio, Boomer, and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend.